We are headed towards that really weird little mountain right there. This is my level of dedication after climbing all the way up there. Hey everybody and welcome back to Ellie Knows Rocks. I'm standing next to Mount Dunafee, or I guess adjacent to it, backed by a wall of limestone that should have trilobites in it. These will be 500 million year old fossils if we can find them. We have made quite the journey out here today in Nevada. We're just a little ways from a little town called Gold Point. And it's actually on the other side of this mountain. It's a historical mining town. We're not going there today, but just to give you reference, it was quite the trek getting out here. So I do really hope that those limestone beds do have fossils. If they don't, don't know what else we're looking for out here. Anyways, thank you guys so much for joining me on this adventure and let's go see what we find. I just wanted to mention how beautiful the scenery is driving out here. This is definitely a very, very rugged road. The entrance to this was intense. Hey everybody, I wanted to let you know that the four wheel drive portion of this is no joke. There is a giant ditch that runs right along the highway. So this is State Highway 774. Down this highway, <clears throat> off of Highway 266, 2.4 miles to this area. But this little jolt right here, if it's full of water, or if it's been raining or anything, I would recommend not doing that. That is some very soft stuff. Being up there to the fossil beds is just quite the feat. So be ready to drive well, have good tires, and know how to use your four wheel drive for situations just like this. See? Not so fun, right? You definitely need a four wheel drive high clearance vehicle. There's been several little wash crossings and detours around parts of the road that have washed out. And we are almost to that outcrop right there. We're getting so close, but I just had to show you this like Joshua tree forest out here in Nevada is just beautiful. This is our ground mass material that we're looking in. I haven't been the first person here, there's a glove. <laughs> but what we're gonna be doing is trying to find a fossil rich layer. And you're looking for kind of little bubbles in the rocks like this. You're looking for indentations in the rock. I'm just gonna flip over a couple here, right on the surface before we get digging into anything to see if we can just find something laying on the surface. It doesn't really say which bedding layer has good fossils in it. We're just going to start breaking some of the layers open of our own and you never know what you could find inside. This one is super etched. There's also supposed to be all kinds of other little fossil critters in here. But the main goal today is to try and find a trilobite. I found an interesting rock here. It's got, where was it? Some interesting little indents, little trails. Those would have been little fossilized trails that were left over. Oh, on this side, you can see a couple crinoid stems, which are those right there. I'm gonna try to Break this open and see if we can split out something inside of it. We've got a very interesting little fossil right there. Nothing really special inside of this at all. Just a couple little, little micro fossils like this guy. And I'm hitting this area. Raking it loose, maybe. That's 
weird one. That's a weird little circle. I'm gonna stick it in my pocket. Some of this stuff might have to be processed. Like, really, when we get home. Where is it? <sighs> Look at this piece. This has a ton of little, like, fossilized worms or worm trails. And it's coming from a layer that's under this rock. But I'm not sure which layer it is, so I'm going to keep pulling some of this stuff apart. Hmm. I think I might be taking a bunch home to look at, clean, and hopefully expose something in all of this like dirt and mud that is coming off of this stuff. This is our amazing landscape. There's the little mountain formation that you kind of drive towards till you'll turn to the left. And this is just the area. I'll keep walking around, of course, to see if I can find something better, but I oh, man, if I had more time, this would be great. Again, this is one of those excursions where it was on the way home, really kind of far off the beaten path. But if we find something, oh, it'll be, it'll be so worth it. Everybody, I just heard the one sound in the desert that makes your arm hair stand up. I have major goosebumps right now because if you can't see them, I'm shaking a little bit. There's a rattlesnake right there. He, I was climbing up the shale and he gave me a good warning to basically back off the air. See if I'm a threat or what I am. And he's probably hanging out because of this giant pack rat nest. So we're going to give him a wide berth because I don't want anything to do with that. And I probably woke him up by hammering. So we're going to just stay where we're at and not go by him because, yep, that's a little bit scary. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no fun at all. No ropes. Yeah, no. Check this out, guys. Look at those fossils. I'm just turning over all the rocks right here, being sure to stay away from the snake and keeping an eye on him. He's very camouflaged. But look at that. These are 500 million year old fossils. That is a spectacular specimen. Wow. Like it might take, I think I can clean it up to expose them a little bit better. So far I have collected an entire bag full of rocks, this shaley limey material. I'm just gonna kind of walk along the outskirts right here just for a few minutes. It is getting to my time limit for leaving. And I figured that coming out here, I wouldn't have all the time in the world to like process the rocks and break them open to see what was inside. So that means I have to haul back a lot of potential garbage. But we did already find an amazing fossil specimen here at the site. Those need to be processed. And if I see something walking around, I will turn the camera on for sure and show you. There's also Wonderstone in this area. I was unaware of that. Where'd he go? Look at that. And this guy, that pretty one right there. So there's a whole layer of Wonderstone. So I don't know what happens with this. This could have been alternating layers of limestone and volcanic or like slate kind of material and volcanics. It's, it's really odd. So that means it would have been a shallow sea and then volcanics and then lake sea type things and then more volcanics in order to have this type of topography. As you can see, the Wonderstone is directly on top of the limestone. <laughs> this is my level of dedication after climbing all the way up there with a pile of rocks to smack open. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Here is the scene of the crime, everybody. I've been washing stuff off and trying to clean all of the pieces of the like limey, shaley, sandy stone. These are the ones that I love the best. 
after looking at all of my finds and all of the stuff, I wanted to show you guys a couple things. Now, even though this is wet, you can still see a really defined shape right here and right here as it goes along. I do believe this is a very poor fossilization of a trilobite. I don't know what kind. Right there, which is really cool. I thought that was just fascinating. We have a lot of different micro fossils. This is pretty cool. I think that there are two trilobites here, possibly even a third one over on the right hand side. But I think these are poor fossilizations of bits of trilobites because not everything fossilizes perfectly. And I like whatever this is. I think this is a big stem, a big crinoid stem or some kind of a fossilized stem at that time. Here's a little teeny tiny uh, back of one of a trilobite. This is still really wet, but but you can see all of the little fossilized trails that were most likely left by some kind of a worm, plus little micro fossils and trace fossils as well. And they were only in layers, like it's amazing. I would break open some of the rocks as you can see from all of like the pieces everywhere. You'd get layers like this and then you'd see a little seam and then all of a sudden it would pop open and it would look like this. Dendrites are very cool. Again, I wish everything would dry out, but it's raining right now. And then some of my favorite pieces and I circled it all so that I could refine them is this little guy right here. You can see it's about, it's bigger than my thumb, but that's like the face of a trilobite. Isn't that cool? And I think there's another little, little piece of one here, like the underside of it. And I'm bummed because I only picked up like two little pieces of the rock that was this color because this was up by the snake and the snake totally scared me away. But I think that that's another piece. I circled one here that looked like a good one. You can see everything's getting all rainy. What about this guy? Here's what I believe is like the nose of one. That one I think is the best. Isn't that cute? And I think that these are all just a giant jumble of a trilobite migration and they all just kind of died right here in this little area. I don't know what type of trilobites these would be, but that's the best piece. This little piece was, I think actually these were, where'd it go? I think these came off of one another. Yeah, right here. See, this broke open. That's what it looked like on the outside. It was a lot more different colored. And I was like, ooh, this is pretty cool. You can see how on the outside, there's almost no trace of there being fossils inside. Because this looked so different, I almost didn't bring it home. And the whole reason that I further broke it open is because this piece was already exposed when I got home. It must have broken in the car because it definitely didn't look like that in the field. This one. Oh yeah. Here's a, here's one right here, little portion. Yeah, I brought everything inside because the rain is just too much out there. But look how cute that little guy is. Literally, I think he is the best specimen. And I'm so excited to have actually found things out there. I didn't know we would be able to, and it's a bummer I couldn't have broken open more rocks while we were there. Look how neat they are. This is so exciting. Here's another really good one. There's so many on this little slab that it's hard to see them all, but he's so cute. You can see how the mountainside has alternating layers of light, dark, light, dark. I really wish I would have brought home more of the light pieces. Thank you everyone so much again for joining me on this adventure. I hope you had an amazing time. I hope you were able to enjoy the fossils as much as I did, including the little note rope. Mm -mm. If you decide to come out to this area, again, please use a four wheel drive vehicle that has high clearance. Be mindful of snakes. This was a good reminder to me that I really need to be watching out for snakes all times of the year. And it was just a good heads up for me to really keep an eye on my surroundings. And because just for a second there, completely didn't dawn on me that there would even be snakes here. So I'm glad that the little guy gave me a quick little jolt of a reminder. And uh, so that was amazing. Thank you guys so much again, and I'll see you on the next one.